All right. Um, so I'm going to introduce myself and talk a little bit about Education USA, and then um, uh, I'll pass it over to Katie, who will be, you know, our presenter today. So my name is Vitor Marconi, Vitor Marconi in Portuguese, and I work for um, Education USA. My office is in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I don't know where um, you guys are from, so Emmanuel and José, would you mind sharing uh, where you live in Brazil? So Education USA is a U.S. State Department network of advising offices worldwide. So what we do is we help students who would like to apply to American universities. So we help students who want to apply to undergraduate programs, that is in Portuguese, faculdade, fazer faculdade nos Estados Unidos. And we also help students who would like to apply to graduate programs, mestrado, doutorado, and other programs, um, short-term programs, intensive English. So Education USA is the official source of um, US higher education to help students like you apply to um, US colleges and universities. So that's why, that's why we're here today. No problem, Emmanuel. We're glad, we're very glad that you're here with us. Um, this afternoon. We want to we wanna know where you're from. So are you from Rio? Are you from somewhere else? We would love to know your background, the school you go to if you're a high school student. So share a little bit about you. This, is, this will be very important um, uh, just for me and for Katie as well. Okay, so we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna start very soon. So just make sure that if you have any questions, if you would like to know more information about Education USA, where we're located in Brazil, and you know where our offices are, just access your, like go to our website, www.educationusa.org.br. Um, yes. Emmanuel, you're from Brazil, but where are you from in Brazil? We have 35 offices. So two offices in Rio de Janeiro, but offices in different parts of Brazil too. So maybe there is an office very close to your house and you don't know that. So I, see, I can see you're typing, so I'm gonna wait and see. So thank you very much, everyone who's here, I can see um, there's Rafael, there's Ella, um, Carol, there is also José. So thank you so much for joining this webinar today. So, and without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to um, Katie Subra, who works for Wynonna State University, and she is responsible for the English language programs there. She's going to be talking to you about university admissions in the United States, giving you advice and recommendations. She's going to be talking about the application process to Wynonna State University, but about the application process to U.S. colleges and universities in general, and also talking about different parts of the application, including standardized testing, um, TOEFL and other exams that you can take to apply to colleges and universities in the United States. Thank you so much, Katie, for um, for um, conducting this webinar and, um, and for thank everyone, you everyone for allowing me to speak to you about this topic. Um, I'm speaking to you from Winona, Minnesota, which is in the northern part of the U.S., right along the Mississippi River. Uh, it's very cold and rainy here today. Um, so I'm happy to be indoors and online talking to you folks. Um, I am the director of English language programs at Winona State University. And a little bit about me, my background is in teaching ESL, um, but I have a lot of experience with admissions and international education as well. I have taught in other countries. Unfortunately, I haven't been to Brazil yet, but um, someday soon. So if you have any questions during the webinar today, please feel free to type them in the chat box. I'll try to monitor it, and I'll also pause a couple of times to take questions if you have them. I'm also recording today's webinar, so I will be sharing the link for the recorded version and the slides, along with all the links inside after today's webinar. 
Okay. So um, I'll be talking about a lot of different topics today, including different program types in colleges and universities, the admissions process in general, um, some specifics about standardized testing and English practice tips, as well as my program specifically and my university. So again, I'm at Winona State University and English language programs is my department. Um, I'll outline our specific application process, which is very similar to other four-year colleges or universities. And again, I will pause for questions throughout. So you probably know most of these program types already, but these are the different types of higher education programs that you will likely find in the United States. Um, all but one of these are relevant to Winona State University. So there are community colleges. That's not what my program or university is, but I'll give you some more details about these in a moment. Um, there's also undergraduate colleges and universities, which is what we are. There are graduate schools, and a lot of colleges and universities have the graduate schools within them. Um, intensive English programs, and short-term study and customized programs. So let me give you some more details about these. Community colleges are two-year institutions that offer degrees or transfer credits to a four-year institution. They have continuous admission, which means that you can apply anytime during the year. And they're typically less expensive than four-year institutions. Um, on the other hand, four-year institutions offer bachelor's degrees, and they have many different major and minor types. Um, they typically require more documentation for application. And then moving into graduate schools, uh, which are often within a university, they have even more requirements for application, um, often requiring higher GPAs, grade point average, um, higher English language proficiency, and more documentation in order to apply. So these are the, th uh, the three, first three from the list. Um, there's two more that I want to talk about that are especially pertinent to English language programs, my department. These are intensive English programs, which may share a campus with a university or may stand alone as a private institution. They help to improve your academic English proficiency. And sometimes you can gain conditional admission to the university by taking courses in an IEP. It's the short for intensive English programs. Um, and then short-term study and customized programs are often within an, a university. These offer distance or online education, summer programs, which may include also study abroad and work uh, study, and then group or individualized learning. So there are seven main steps for admission to US colleges and universities, and these are relevant for our university and across the United States. Um, you want to start, of course, by researching programs that you are interested in. You probably have already done this or started doing this when you were in junior high or high school if you're interested in studying abroad. Um, it's important to note what program types or degrees are available and what your outcomes, your hope, um, your wishes are for after graduation. Uh, you also want to research the cost and if there's any financial assistance available, such as scholarships, uh, in-state tuition, or housing and transportation cost support. The second step you want to complete when preparing for admissions is reading the application requirements carefully. Eligibility and documentation are very important when it comes to applying, and then also meeting the deadlines. Many universities have strict deadlines for when you can apply, so if you miss that, you might miss an opportunity to attend in the semester that you would like to attend. Okay. Um, the third step is that you want to collect your application materials and send them in, including at the very least an application form, transcripts, or your diploma, 
and your standardized test scores, which I'll talk about more later. Um, next, uh, you should receive an I-20 in the mail if you are accepted to that university. Um, you will then use that I-20 to apply for your student visa. Most likely this is going to be an F-1 visa. And there are application instructions that are different for every country. So you want to check with your local embassy or consulate to see what the instructions are for Brazilians. Um, the fifth step would be to stay in contact with the admissions office to make sure that you're meeting any follow-up deadlines or submitting any follow-up materials that they need. Then obviously you want to start to prepare for your travel and your housing to make sure that something is available for you when you get there. You will probably want to communicate your flight details and arrival date with the admissions office. Um, often there is somebody available to greet you if you do this. And then think about immediate and long-term housing. If you come into the country a little bit early before the semester begins, you may need to find alternate housing for your immediate needs, uh, such as in a hotel or with a homestay um, or an apartment. And think about long-term housing, which may be on or off campus. Um, and then think about what are you going to eat, where are you going to shop when you are there. A lot of this stuff you can do ahead of time. Um, and lastly, think about your health insurance. U universities in the U.S. have a health insurance requirement. You might be able to submit your home insurance for consideration, or you may need to purchase the university's health insurance plan. Uh, think also about technology. You will be using your phone or laptop if you need to purchase those things. And then the orientation that the university offers. Typically, universities have at least a few days, sometimes a whole week of orientation to help you get acclimated to the new environment, the new campus community, um, to complete several important tasks, registration, and so on. So do check with the admissions office about those orientation dates. Okay. Uh, before I get into Winona State University's specific application process, I want to pause here and remind you that if you have a question throughout the webinar, feel free to type it in this chat box here. Um, I, I'd like to address questions as they come up, but I'll also take questions at the end and share my email as well. Um, so, next I will tell you more specifically about Winona State University's application process. So, you will need to choose your status. When you look at our application form, you will be asked if you are a freshman, which means you're a first year student. If you are a transfer student, meaning you have college credit from another university um, or another community college, um, or perhaps you are a graduate student. Uh, in addition to indicating this status, you'll have to indicate in our university whether you are coming just for ESL study, for example, in my program, or if you're hoping to pursue a four-year degree. Um, okay. The application form for our program uh, for our university is linked here, and I'll share that link again at the end. Okay. The next thing you want to do to apply to Winona State um, and to many universities would be to collect all your application materials. So here is a complete list of the materials you would need to apply here. Um, the application form, the fee of $20. This is a non-returnable fee that's pretty standard for the processing costs. You would need to submit the transcripts from your high school or university if you have already attended university. Um, alternately, you could submit a diploma. Uh, a bank statement with a minimum balance of $23,000. That is if you are planning to study with us for a full year. In order to issue an I-20 for your visa, we need to have confirmation of um, funds to get you through the year. 
And this balance is not what our tuition costs, but it includes uh, other things that could come up like transportation, cost for books and supplies, housing, all of that stuff. Okay, um, if someone else is sponsoring you, then they can write a letter along with your bank statement stating that they are your sponsor. You, next, you would also need a copy of your passport or your birth certificate. And you would need to submit your English language proficiency exam scores. If you are applying just to come study for ESL, then you don't need to submit those scores. We would assume that um, you would get your English proficiency requirement through our program. Um, the deadlines for Winona State are for fall admission, July 1st, and for spring admission, November 1st. A little bit later, I'll mention another deadline uh, that's specific to English language programs. So next, I want to tell you a little bit more about the English proficiency requirements um, that are pretty standard across universities in the United States. So I have four different tests listed here. These are what we call standardized tests. Um, they're tests you can take um, from locations around the world. Many of them are online, some are in person. And in order to be admitted and not go through ESL training, at our institution, you need to submit a minimum score of 68, for example, for the TOEFL, 5.5 for the IELTS, 21 for the ACT, or um, an SAT score with the reading and math score equaling 1,060. So these are the four types of tests that we accept for English proficiency proof. However, um, some universities also accept scores for other tests. For example, um, the Michigan test is one popular one, or Pearson is another one. You want to check with your institution that you're applying to to see what tests they would accept. I do want to share some more information about TOEFL and IELTS, since these are the most popular tests and are most widely accepted at universities. So this slide has a lot of information on it. Um, these, these links within it you'll have access to later as well. But just comparing these two tests is, is something you want to think about before you begin the application process. Um, they are fairly comparable in a number of ways. Uh, you'll, of course, want to read more about each one by going to the websites listed there. But I would say that TOEFL is the most common and it's the most widely accepted for university admissions in the United States. However, other countries um, may have the IELTS more common, but actually both of these tests are accepted around the world. Uh, for the TOEFL test, you would need to put aside three to four hours on test day to complete it. For the IELTS test, it's only two hours and 45 minutes but they both test the same skills. So reading, listening, speaking, and writing are tested in both of these. I would say that the TOEFL has um, more dates available, and I did look up upcoming dates in Rio de Janeiro. So I see that every one to two weeks, um, both of these tests are offered. Um, I'm not sure exactly where the location is to take the TOEFL, but there are a number of locations in Brazil where you can take the TOEFL. Uh, to take the IELTS test in Brazil, uh, you would want to go to your British Council, since that is um, a test that originated in Great Britain. So they could set up the test for you. Um, both of these tests have a lot of online resources where you can prepare uh, if you want to study ahead of time. Of course, the test is meant to evaluate your proficiency level based on the English practice you've had already. But a lot of people get nervous before a test and they want to do more study. Um, and they want to prepare and think about how the test will be, what kinds of questions, and so on. So both of them offer some test preparation the TOEFL has a 
prepare site with some test questions. Uh, so does the IELTS. And actually, I found um, through an online course platform called edX, both of these uh, courses have a free online class that you can take to prepare for the test. So edX, EDX is the is the platform where you can take what are called massive open online classes. Perhaps you have taken some before, um, and these are great ways to prepare for the test. Okay. Great. So, and please note the additional information being shared in the chat box. So you can follow up with these links a little bit later to set up a test if you need to. Great. So in addition to preparing specifically for those tests, you may want to practice English, work on your English more, either prior to taking a proficiency test or just prior to coming to the United States. Even if you have already studied English, uh, it's a good idea to brush up, we say, or continue to practice before coming here. There are certain academic skills that you may not have practiced for a while, and you would probably feel more confident in arriving on campus if you, if you do a little bit of this at least. So just a few tips um, on practicing English. You can do extensive reading and listening practice by reading or listening to academic articles and lectures. I'll share a couple of links in a moment. Um, and then you can try to take notes or summarize these in writing to get additional English practice. Okay. There are timed reading and writing practices that you can do. Um, you can search for some online by writing um, in a paragraph or essay style, depending on your level, and using organization within your writing. So if you take TOEFL or IELTS, or if you're taking any classes in the United States at a university, organization is an important part of academic English skills. Okay. Um, another thing to practice is accessing an academic word list, building your academic vocabulary and using it in writing and speaking. So one piece of advice I have is that you could choose five or six words a week and learn the definitions, the synonyms, collocations, or parts of speech related to those words. Okay. And here I have shared some links. Um, in addition to what you see here, I'm confident that your Education USA Center and even your, your local um, embassy may have some additional resources for you to practice your English. So um, obviously using authentic resources such as um, newspapers uh, or news sites such as the New York Times or Voice of America. These are two very popular resources for practicing English. And then as I mentioned earlier, you can take uh, free online classes and edX was one of those links that I shared, also Coursera, or American English MOOCs are another one, which are offered by the U.S. State Department. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question as well. I see you're sharing your locations. Um, what is your favorite way to practice English? Do you have a technique you use uh, to practice your academic English, review vocabulary, or practice your writing, practice your speaking. If you have a favorite practice that you have, please type it into the chat box. I'm interested to know what you do to practice your English. Okay, see a couple of folks are writing. And if something on my list here is something you do already, you can mention that as well. Okay, Raphael practices writing skills. Great. Reading and listening to music are other good options. If it's something you like to do or love to do, I think it's more effective. So that's great if you found what you enjoy. Okay. Reading the news is another great way to practice. And with the two links on the top of this page, you can both read and listen to the news articles. 
and you can actually find the definitions of certain vocabulary words right there in the articles too. So that's a great way to practice. What else do you like to do to practice your English? Do you, for example, watch movies, take online courses? Maybe you're already taking courses in English. While you're typing, I'll just note here that um, while we do have classes here in the summer, I have noticed that some students, international students here, will go home during the summer. And since they practice their English a lot prior to coming here, they think they don't need to practice it when they go home for vacation. However, when they come back in the fall, sometimes I find that their English skills have gone backwards a little bit just because they haven't practiced. So it's important to keep up the practice. Watching a series on Netflix or Amazon Prime, those are great ways to practice. Yep. And reading the news, books, YouTube videos, Netflix, all of those are excellent suggestions. Great. I'm glad you are all practicing your English. Okay, so even though you're practicing your English a lot, I do want to mention that uh, my program, English Language Programs, is offering a pathway program or what we call conditional admission. This means that if you don't meet the minimum proficiency requirements set by the TOEFL or IELTS or ACT or SAT scores that I shared earlier, you can still come to Winona State University and you will be admitted conditionally, meaning you would complete some English classes and then once you meet our requirements, you would be admitted fully into the university. You can read more. Um, about our requirements here at this website. And I want to share a few more details about my program and about my university now. We are strategically located in the, the center of the United States, um, pretty far north from where you are, but we are close to many international airports, including in Minneapolis, Chicago. Those are the two closest ones. This university was founded in 1858, so we've been around for quite a while, and it started out as a teacher training institution. However, it's expanded a lot since that time. We have accreditation by the Higher Learning Commission of the North Central Association, and we are a member of a larger system of colleges and universities within Minnesota. Um, here is a photo of what our city looks like in the summer. Um, if you were to come in the winter, it would be all white, most likely, but it's still beautiful in the winter. We have a population in Winona of 30,000 people. You can see there are beautiful lakes and the Mississippi River. We have bluffs, which are big hills along the river. Um, it's a quite beautiful uh, place to be. Uh, very peaceful, very safe and usually pretty quiet as well. But there are a lot of interesting things to do here, including art, outdoor recreation and um, the arts are well supported. So just to tell you a little more about our international students, if you choose to come here, you would be in good company. There are typically between 230 and 250 international students on our campus alone. I forgot to mention, um, as it says here, there are locations in Winona, that's my city, and Rochester, which is about one hour away from here. So we have multiple campuses, but on our campus alone, you will find around 250 international students. And this past semester, we have seven, actually no, this fall, 2018, we will have seven students from Brazil. Some of them are new. Most of them have been here for a year or two already. The highest populations of international students that we have are students from China, Nepal, Saudi Arabia, and South Korea. Um, however, this does fluctuate from year to year. And we currently have other students from South America, including from Argentina, Colombia, and Venezuela. 
we've had students from other countries in South America too, but this is just our current population. Okay. At Winona State University, there are five different colleges, um, which are listed here, business, education, liberal arts, nursing, and health sciences, and science and engineering. Within each of those colleges, there are many majors to pick from. We also have different graduate programs. So you could obtain a graduate degree in nursing, leadership education, counselor education, English literature, TESOL, that's my field, teaching English as a second language, or teaching English to speakers of other languages, rather, and education and special education. Now you may be wondering, how can you fund your studies in the United States? As I mentioned before, many universities offer different scholarship uh, opportunities, and here is no different. So all international students who come to Winona State University on an F-1 visa qualify for a cross-cultural scholarship. This means that international students can pay the same tuition as Minnesota residents. So in the United States, often if you are from a different state than the school that you are attending, you will have to pay more tuition than the students who live in that state. But this allows international students to pay a lower rate, the same as Minnesotans pay. Um, if you are eligible for this, you will receive a scholarship letter with your I-20. And you will have to complete some projects to make sure you keep this scholarship. So those might be things like attending an international event, um, participating in a performance, uh, and also maintaining a grade point average required by the program. We also have many other scholarships in the middle of the page here. There is a link um, that lists all the different scholarships that you could be eligible for. But for incoming freshmen who have no transfer credits and who have a very high test score, you can qualify for a presidential honor scholarship. Based on what score you receive for the TOEFL, the IELTS, the SAT, or the ACT, as you see down here, you can qualify for different awards each year. Okay. So from $1,000 to $3,500, depending on what score you receive. The estimated cost for attending Winona State University um, is listed here. It's a little bit different than my program. English language programs has different costs but you can see what the expectations might be here. Um, and yes, very good question, Vitor. So you're asking about our most popular programs. Well, I would say because of our beginning as a teacher educating university, um, our education department is quite popular, um, including elementary education and counselor education within the graduate program. Um, for international students, I would say many of our business majors and science and engineering majors are most popular. So, for example, we have composite materials engineering here that's very popular with international students and various business majors. Um, so management, information systems, human resource management, um, all of those kinds of programs are very popular with international students. Let's see what else. You might also find um, our chemistry department, um, other engineering departments are quite popular as well. Within Minnesota, we are um, highly sought after for our nursing program as well. I just want to mention um, it's one of the most competitive nursing programs in the Midwestern United States. Very good question. Okay, so just to provide a few more details about my program, remember you can feel free to share your questions at any time. 
Um, English language programs at Winona State University has the specific English language training to help students improve their academic English um, just for the sake of improving or if you wish to be admitted to the university you can of course enter our pathway program. These are the fees that are related to my program specifically. So we have a different rate for fall and spring versus summer. In the fall and spring we have a 16 week program and in the summer we have a six week intensive program. Depending on when you come you would attend classes for a different amount of hours per week. You would also participate in cultural activities and um, that includes field trips, um, cultural excursions, and academic field trips as well. You can see that the costs here include at the top tuition, program fees, room and board, health insurance. These are required. However, you may have some additional fees related to personal expenses or supplies. So you want to keep that in mind. And when you do apply um, to get an I-20, you will have to have your bank statement showing uh, these minimums listed at the bottom. So we have customized programs here as well. So in addition to those 16 week and six week programs, you can come to the university here in a group if you have something specific you'd like to study. And to do that, you would contact me, the director, and we can set something up for a group. Um, usually our minimum group number is 10. And for 10 students or more, we can offer teacher training, uh, TOEFL preparation, English for specific purposes, and, and much more. So if you have those interests, just contact me. As I mentioned, we also have many cultural activities. Whatever program you enroll in, you will have an opportunity to socialize with other international students, other domestic students, and people in the community. Um, there's a lot of detail here. I'm not going to read the whole slide to you, but just to note the Bridge and Pathway program, as I mentioned before, is a great way to start out in English language programs and then transfer into the university. Um, you could do that by entering as a um, bridge student, which actually means you start out as a full-time ELP student, and then when you're ready for bridge status, you take some of our classes and some credit courses in your major. Pathway students, on the other hand, could start out as full-time ELP students, or they could come in with a high enough score it's not quite high enough to get into the university, but it's close. And so therefore they can take some classes with us and some classes with the university credit-based classes right away. And normally if you are bridged, um, you would take two classes with us and two classes with the university. So I have shared a lot of information with you today and I'm sure you have some questions or are thinking more about your future studies. So I do hope that you will follow up. Um, as I'm talking right now, please feel free to type in any additional questions you have in the chat box. I have some contacts listed here. We are on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Um, you can also write to us directly. And you might find many of the answers to your questions on our website as well. If you want to look up information about our university, but not specifically about English language programs, then you could just type in this first part of the URL here. So you would leave off ELP. And you'll find a lot of information about Winona State University and the individual programs here. So. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them here. I will share this PowerPoint, all the links, and this recording with you by email. And I'm, I'm very glad you took the time to, to join me here today in Adobe. Uh, I hope you will have an opportunity to study abroad as well.
question about the cost for attendance. Um, I'm guessing you are asking Victoria about the cost for the university in general. So I'll share this slide with you again. So the tuition is 7,377. Um, and so this cost you're asking if it's by semester or by the year. This is by the year. It's a very good question. And the fees and additional costs listed here are also for the whole year. Great question. You can find more details about the costs at this website. Here. Hello everyone, I'm back. So Katie, thank you so much for this wonderful webinar. I myself learned a lot, so I'm, I'm guessing that other people will share the same feeling. And so let's wait and see if um, other people will have um, additional questions. I know Emmanuel's typing and I, I've already asked my own questions. So what we can do is I'll provide you with their contact information and you, and you can share with them uh, the PowerPoint and, and, and any other links and materials that you find helpful. And I'm guessing that we have no more questions, but feel free to, to contact Katie if you, if you have any questions. So Winona State University is a great institution and I think you will, you will benefit a lot from knowing more about their their majors, their website, and I just love the idea of having a cross-cultural scholarship because if I was an undergrad or a prospective undergrad, I would definitely apply for such an opportunity because when you're an international student and you're abroad, I think it's a great way of connecting with other um, students, uh, whether they are international students or US citizens. So it's a great way of sharing your culture and even learning the English language, which is one of the benefits of um, studying the US. Oh, there's one more question there. So I will allow <laughs> Katie to answer it. Sure, yes. Um, we do offer financial aid, but this is for domestic students. Um, so I guess I would say for international students, it's more of the merit-based aid that you can achieve. Um, both the presidential scholarship and the cross-cultural scholarship are your, are your best options. So again, that presidential scholarship is based on merit, um, based on standardized testing scores. The cross-cultural scholarship is given to any F1 student holding, a, um, any student holding an F1 visa, who also meets our criteria listed. Um, but there are a few other scholarships available, so you can go to the website to look up which other scholarships are available to international students. Okay, yeah. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Katie, for the, for the opportunity. Feel free to reach out to us again if you want to repeat this webinar. I'm sure, I'm sure other people would be interested in finding out more about um, Winona State University. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. And Katie, I'll send you an email just with um, some, some other questions that I have. Sounds great. Okay. Thank you. And I'll hang out here for a couple more minutes just in case you have more questions. But I'm going to take my camera down. So have a great evening and hope to talk to you soon.